If you have some basic programming knowledge, then you can also decide to add C-sharp to your script instead of using the basic actions. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. By adding C-sharp to your scripts, you can even make them more advanced. But adding C-sharp is actually not that difficult. And I'm going to show you how easy it can be to start using C-sharp in your scripts. So let's connect to DataMiner Cube and start creating a new script. I'm going to again use Singular Life as an example, and I'm actually going to rework parts of our existing scripts, but now in C Sharp. To use C Sharp, in the actions I select C Sharp code, and then you will notice an editor opens up. This editor has some nice features. First of all, here I can actually add my code. If I click the validate button, it will validate my C Sharp code to check if there are no errors. And in the advanced, I am able to add additional namespaces or DLLs that are required for my, for my code to run. For example, if I use specific feature from a DLL that is not standard, then I can reference that here. Again, I want to use this for my singular life overlay. So I will again add a dummy singular life linked to my singular life protocol version. I won't define a configuration element because now I don't really need it in my C sharp code. And I will add my action parameter again. Linked to my singular life overlay actions file. Now, how do I start using this C sharp code? First of all, I would like to show you that it's actually very straightforward to retrieve the dummy or actions defined in my script. If I right click in the editor, you'll notice I have some sample snippets available. These can be used or these are some code samples to, for example, generate an information event, get a script dummy, log something, get or set parameters. Actually, for most of the actions that are otherwise available, if you're not using C sharp. In my case, the first thing I want to do is retrieve my singular life dummy. You'll see that it's a script dummy object, so I'll call it dummy singular life. And I, of course, need to provide the name of my dummy. If I now, for example, would make a mistake and I click validate, then you'll see that it's automatically detected. And it's quite easy for me to figure out what I have forgotten. If I now validate again, I no longer have any errors. By adding dummy before the name of my singular life dummy, I will have IntelliSense available. So if I now check what is available for my singular life dummy, you'll notice there are a lot of methods and properties available that I can check. I can, for example, check if my element is active or not. If it wouldn't be active, then there's no point of continuing. So let's add a condition for that. Of course, I want to exit my script when it is not active. So in that case, standard methods are available through the engine object. So if I start typing engine and select dot, then you'll see a lot of methods are available again. In my case, I want to exit my script with a failure saying singular life element is not active. The next thing I would like to do is checking if my stream is active. You'll notice that I didn't create a dummy this time because I want to show you how you can retrieve elements from C sharp. So to do that, I will select engine dot and search for a method to retrieve an element. In this case, you'll see I have quite some find element methods available. In my case, I will use this one. And then I can provide the name of my element or the ID of my element. Here I will provide the name. And of course, I need to create 
variable for that. I'll call it element stream. And then I will have more or less the same properties and methods available as I have for a dummy. So if I now again want to check if my stream is active. If it is not, I will again exit my script. I will not check our backup for now. I'll just keep my script quite easy. Let me open up the editor a bit more. The next thing I want to do is check if my stream is running. So for that, I need to retrieve a parameter value. In my case, I need the state parameter and check if it's running. I can retrieve the parameter by its name or by its ID. To check the ID, I can double click double click here and if i go to details you'll see that this parameter has id 103 so how do i retrieve that value if i type element stream again you'll see i have some methods available to retrieve a parameter i can retrieve the internal value or the display value in my case i'm going to retrieve the display value because that's easier to verify then i'm going to use the id and i'm going to use this method because it's in a table i need to provide the index so the id was 103 and the index is stream now this is a if i now validate i have no errors but i need to check the value of this so i'll give this And I'll convert this to a string. And now I can actually check this state in an if condition again. I can here again end my script if my stream would not be running. Now let me save this. Something else I would like to show is that you can also generate information events or logging from your script. So when I type engine again, you'll see that if I go a bit down, I have a log method available. This can be useful to debug your scripts easily. For example, I can say stream is running. Now I'm already at this point, so I know my stream is running fine when this is locked. If I wouldn't find this in my log file, I know it would have failed in some of these steps. Now, as you see, I have a lot of snippets available. And there are a lot of extra methods available here or for your elements, for example. I won't go deeper into all of these, but I do want to finish this script. So instead of adding the necessary set parameters for my singular life overlay action, I'm going to show you how you can call another script from C Sharp. So if I go to the snippets again and select run subscript, then you'll see some example on how to do this. The dummies, I don't need to retrieve these. I already have my dummy. So the dummy I need to provide in that script was singular live. And that dummy is already available here. So I can just copy paste that. I don't have a second dummy, but I do need to provide the action parameter. So for that, I'll use subscript one dot. And because I start my subscript options with subscript in the name, I again have IntelliSense. So here I want to select script param. The name of my param is action. And I'm going to use the action that was provided here. But for that, I'm not retrieving that parameter yet. So let me also show you how to do that. 
by now here do action the engine dot get and then instead of dummy i'll use get script param type the name of my param and now i need to retrieve the value from that param so now my action is also passed to my subscript i haven't configured the name yet for my subscript so let's call this singular live overlay action so i want to execute this script basically and now i have some options available these are the same options like we had when we were uh, triggering our subscript from the actions so i'll leave this as is and now my subscript would be called so if i now save my script and execute i select my singular live dummy and my action to show the overlay for example if i execute it my c sharp block will be executed my stream is running will be locked and then my subscript is called so now my action was displayed this was only a very limited example of what you can do with c sharp in an automation script if you want to learn more about it i suggest to check the data miner help and give it a try